Hey, how you doing? Jack Scalfani here, and you're cooking with Jack. Welcome back to the show. Forgive my uh, black hat. My yellow one is still a little dirty from uh, my son's little antics with the, you know, the, the big top cupcake scene. Yeah, you know how that turned out. Anyway, I still have uh, some, <laughs> some cupcake cream in my eye. Uh, so that hat is drying. I had to wash it. But we are back with another episode. It's time to start getting back into some, uh, some lessons. That's right. We've done product reviews. We've gone on field trips. We've done, uh, we've done specialty uh, holiday events. Right now, I want to start teaching you guys some, some tips and tricks, okay? So every so often, I'm going to do an episode that's going to teach you something, uh, whether it's parboiling or uh, whether it's uh, butterflying or whether it's uh, just things that you see on cooking shows that you're like, what are they talking about? All right? Uh, and here's a little trick right now. For those of you who eat steak... Uh, or any kind of uh, cut of beef or any meat whatsoever, I guess this would work on. I've only tried it on steak so far, okay? It's called the poor man's filet mignon. And what that does is it's a way of taking a really, and I'm going to be just honest, a really tough, cheap piece of garbage steak, okay, and making it tender and amazing, falls apart. I mean, you, you could probably pull it apart with your fingers instead of a knife and a fork. So uh, we're going to show you this. Uh, it's really cool. My brother called me one day. He goes, Jack, Jack, here, I sent you a link. Check this out on, online. There's this cool method of, uh, of tenderizing your meat before you cook it. And it only takes about between one to two hours, depending how thick your meat is. Could be as little as 15 minutes. So let's, uh, let's show you how. I went to the store, and I bought the cheapest piece of garbage they had on sale. <laughs> uh, so cheap. All right. Uh, it was $1.99 a pound. That's all I could find. If it was 99 cents a pound, I would have brought that home. But uh, it's called, what is it? Uh, Select Beef Cross Rib Roast. I don't know what that is. I know there's no bones in it. Anyway, let me show you how to do this. We're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison. I had the butcher take a thick piece and slice it right in the middle. So we have two pieces of the same steak. All right? So there's no question about this test. If one comes out more tender than the other, they're from the same steak. Okay? All right, so let's take a look. All right, two clean pans. We're gonna open up these steaks, put one in each. Don't forget to wash your hands. If you haven't washed your hands, now's a good time to go wash your hands, all right? Okay, once again, I took one piece of meat and I had the butcher slice it right down the middle, okay? So that it would be the same cut of meat. Ah, beautiful. I love beef. As you can tell, it just looks good. There's so many things you can do with it. You can cook it a million different ways. This is not a good cut of beef, okay? I'm just telling you that right now. Okay, next thing you're gonna do is you're going to take sea salt or, co or kosher salt, and that's a very coarse salt, and we're gonna take that, we're gonna cover one of them completely with sea salt. All right, so let's, uh, let's do that right now. Okay, so we're going to do this. Now, the rule is this. Find out how thick your steak is. Ours is about an inch and a half. Okay? So you're going to have to leave this on. An inch is an hour. So an inch and a half would be an hour and a half. Once again, every inch is an hour you leave this salt on. If it's half an inch, then you do half an hour. Quarter of an inch, quarter of an hour. All right? Don't be afraid to put too much on because we're going to wash this right off when we're done. But this is going to do something to the meat. It's really interesting. There we go. I got the whole thing covered. Put a little bit more down here. All right, there we go. Now, I don't know why this works. I'm sure some of you do, and you can write me in and tell me. But what's going to happen is it's going to pull the moisture out of this meat and it's also going to do something to the protein molecules. It's going to break them down. And what's going to happen is this simple piece of meat, as you can see, it's pretty, it's pretty tough. See how it doesn't, there's no openings. Okay, you can pull it apart. Okay, this is going to open up the meat. Uh, it, it does something to the protein molecules. I don't know the science to it. I just know it works. And I'm just going to show you guys right now. So we're going to let this set for, let's break out my measuring tape. That is about, you know what? That's about a, an inch and a quarter. 
So we're gonna do an hour and 15 minutes, okay? I'll be back in an hour and 15 minutes to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Notice there's no moisture or water in there, just the salt. No moisture or water in this one. All right, let's check this out in an hour and 15 minutes. You're watching the Cooking with Jack show. We'll be right back, right after this message. Hey, how you doing? Jack Scalfani here. Just wanna tell you about my line of sauces. They're called the best sauces you'll ever taste. That's right. It's called the best barbecue sauce you'll ever taste. Here's the best hot barbecue sauce you'll ever taste. The best teriyaki sauce you'll ever taste. And the best gourmet seasoning you'll ever taste. All of them come with a money back guarantee. And if you live in the United States of America, I give you free shipping. I'm pleased to announce that my friends in the Great White North in Canada, I have now set up an order page for Canadian orders. I don't do free shipping, but now Canadians can order the sauces too. Go check it out. Go to thebestsauces.com. I'll see you there. And now, back to the Cooking with Jack show. It's been an hour and 15 minutes, and you can see that all the salt has, has really become moist. It's pulling, it's drawing all the water out of it. You can also see, if you, if we turn this, let me move this one over a little bit. If you turn this, you can see like the salt, there's a lot of moisture down in there collecting. And you can see where the, the water is coming out of the steak. It just it's just coming right out of the bottom. So uh, it's doing something to this meat. So we're going to take both of these and get them prepared for cooking. All right, first thing you do is rinse the entire thing of salt. There we go. Get all the salt off it. And look, what you notice is, see all those openings? Look at all those groove openings. It's starting to kind of kind of pull apart a little bit here. It's really penetrated the meat. Get a good rinse. Now, you can see it's, it's re kind of very loose feeling. Here, I'll show you at the other, at the table. Okay, let's look at the difference of the meat, okay? Take a look at how this, this has been not treated. How it kind of just looks straight out of the butcher counter, okay? And look at this. This is a lot more falling apart. You can already see the grooves. Look at the separation. Can you see that separation right there? The separation right in there, all these grooves that are created, uh, it just seems to be falling apart in my hands. It's not quite as firm. Here, let me turn it the right way. There we go. There you go. Okay. It seems to have opened up the meat. It's really interesting. So there you go. Now we're going to take these out and we're going to grill these. Now once this is clean of salt, season both of these as however you want. I'm going to season them up. I'm going to take them out to the grill and bring them right back. And then we're gonna do a taste test to see if this opened up and got more tender than this one. Okay, these just came off the grill. I wanna show you some similarities and some differences. Okay, now I noticed while cooking, these, these were cooked on, over their own flame. Each one had a flame underneath it on the barbecue. They were cooked identically, same position, same amount of time I pulled them off. But the weird thing is, the untreated one looks like it curled up a little bit right on this end. And I don't know if you can see it, but it kind of curled up and it kind of looked like it cooked overcooked or got well done. But look at this one right here. This one's interesting because this still, I like my steak rare. This looks rare and this looks well done. They look completely different. Uh, they look like they were cooked at diff completely different times. So one more thing I want to do before I want to lift these up and see which one has more juice before we cut into them. Okay. okay, this one definitely has more juice than this one. All right, but we're going to cut into these bad boys right now. Let me bring over a plate. This is the one seasoned with the salt. This is the one not seasoned with the salt. We're going to cut right into them. We're going to see exactly how they cooked. Oh, yeah, nice and rare. Okay, that's beautiful. Let's take a look at this one. Same spot. Same thing. Beautiful. They're both beautiful. Let's take a look now and see. Let's see if one's more tender than the other. I'm going to try and rip this, tear this meat open with my fingers. It's pretty easy. A little nervy. I lied. That was a little tougher than I thought, but uh, you can do it. 
Now let's go over here and look at this. Same spot. And that goes right through. Wow. That was beautiful. That was a lot easier. Now, I think if you left the salt on a little bit longer, you would even have a better, uh, a better tenderizing procedure. All right, so here's the deal. I'm gonna take a piece of meat here. Wow, I know what I'm having for dinner. <laughs> There's one piece there. I want the same size here. So we're gonna try this right now. We let the meat set, it should be perfect. This is the untreated. Good seasoning. Wow, lots of pepper. <coughs> Forgive me. Mm, I love black pepper. Okay. It's really got a lot of flavor, but it immediately toughens up. Almost all the juice is out of it, and it's now becoming harder to chew. Now the treated one. Mmm. Mmm. This is more like a New York steak. I think we've upgraded to a New York steak right here. Mmm. It's breaking up real easy. It definitely makes a difference. I've done this before, but I had to share it with you guys. Mmm. Delicious. I'm gonna get a little A1. I'm gonna sit down with these steaks and we're gonna have a conversation going. You guys, try it out. Write me, send me pictures. Tell me I'm not lying, please. All right, I'll see you on the next Cooking with Jack. Take care.